Since early morning, a mass of dark clouds covered the small bay like a heavy grey coat. Under a small shelter, Little Mick was lonely, sitting by himself with nothing to do. In front of him, the grey sea, flat and dull. Suddenly, the little boy heard the birds cry out. Let's go see if he's come out. Let's go see if he's come out. And then, further away, some colored triggerfish whispered, Let's see if he's come out. And at the bottom of the cliff across, Little Mick heard the octopus mumble, Let's go see if he's come out of his cave. Little Mick then hoisted into a small wooden boat. And at the bottom of the cliff, Little Mick found the entrance to a cave. Fearlessly, he climbed up the cliff to the entrance of the mysterious cave. Climbing up, Little Mick remembered the story told by his grandfather, the legend of the crab witches. In a cave lived two small crab witches called Cacho and Wedgie. Cacho never left his cave. Cacho was afraid of the birds that might dive on him to gobble him up. Cacho was afraid of the octopus always on the lookout for the careless. Cacho was afraid of the big trigger fish that would be ready to devour him. Yes, Cacho was afraid of everything. However, his sister, Raji, went down at low tide to go eat some shells on the rocks. Sometimes she brought some back for her brother. 
Little Mac reached the entry of the cave. All of a sudden, a terrible storm exploded in the sky. The wind forced Little Mac into the dark cave. That's where he discovered the two crabs. My name is Little Mac, said the little boy. Vanira Aningamuro. My name is Wajay, and here's my brother Kacho, said the little crab witch. Little Mac was going to apologize for arriving so impolitely in the cave, but... Little Mick saw a huge silhouette across the bay. It's an ogre. It's the ogre of the coast. A cruel ogre that ate everything. Everything he found. Little Mac, Cacho, and Wadje hid from behind some of the big rocks. Suddenly, a violent clap of thunder rang out the sky. The ogre turned around and looked at the clouds as if he wanted to eat them. That's when the ogre's eyes burst open, burnt by the lightning falling from the sky. Pushed by hunger, the ogre started to explore the rocks to find something to eat. Little Mick and the two crab witches made themselves very, very small, but, but the hand of the ogre found little Kacho. Wait, ogre, wait. I can give you back your sight with some magic, squealed Kacho. The ogre was surprised. What can you do to give me back my sight? He growled. My sister will give you two flat shells. Two shells to replace your eyes. And then you'll see the beauty of the world. So be it, growled the ogre. But watch out, if you're lying, give me those shells. Wajie, Kacho's sister, slid carefully two shells into the thick hands of the ogre. The giant put the shells in its orbits. Suddenly, the storm stopped. The ogre couldn't believe his new eyes. Instead, he thanked his new eyes. He even cried out with joy. When he looked towards Wedgie, he saw her as a pretty young girl. And when his eyes discovered Kacho, it's a beautiful little boy that he saw. Then his new eyes met little Mac. The ogre declared that he didn't have any children. 
and if all the three of them agreed, he, the ogre of the coast, would be their father from now on. <laughs> Little Meg thanked him, but he explained that he already had parents and a grandfather who told him many extraordinary stories. <laughs> Arrived on the bank of the river, the ogre built a hut for Kacho, and he built another hut for Wachi. Since then, he stopped eating people, because to him, everyone was a child that must be protected. Yes, this is how he now saw the world. Nani ngamro ma mato mwe ama kuturi. Chapwere ma vairi. Kwenbati, nagugur. Is everything all right, my grandson? But little Nick said that he'd spent a fabulous day. Because now Little Mick had learned something important. In life, everything is beautiful if you know how to look on the bright side. Et des pépins, il y en aura toujours plein. La pastèque est 